Hello, this is Stories About Speaking. My name is Joanne. I was thinking, how can I tell a story to you that's actually really useful to you in terms of helping you get better at speaking? And I was thinking about, there was a couple of phrases that I learned. Remember, English is my first language, but in English, a couple of phrases that I learned that as soon as I heard them, it suddenly made everything a lot easier and I thought I'd share them with you and the quick version is the two phrases are that was not my experience and the second one is it depends and the first of all the that was not my experience I don't know where I heard it first but I was experienced the experience of my day-to-day life was that I didn't feel that I was being respected by other professionals or other experts and I felt like I was listening to them and their experience of the world and their theories and and their expertise and giving them lots of respect about how they thought and viewed the world but then they would be really dismissive of me and to the point that you felt like you're being gaslit and and that how you felt about the situation just didn't happen and as soon as somebody said to me oh that was not my experience I remember just thinking oh that's what I need that's the phrase that I need it isn't saying that the other person is wrong or that their experience is different or that their expertise is is bad but if that doesn't relate to my experience then that's perfectly valid. My experience is still perfectly valid. And then it's something that we can actually talk about because we're not saying you're right and I'm wrong or I'm right, you're wrong or anything like that. What you're saying is it sounds like maybe we have different experiences about the same time, uh, about the same thing. And, and that's a useful conversation, don't you think? That's That's much better than saying well, the answer to this is X. And I say, well, I think the answer is Y. Not that I would even contradict people because in the early days, I was just, as I say, I was so in awe of how smoothly and fluidly people would express themselves and the certainty that they had, the certainty that theirs was the right way and there was no other way of viewing the world. I didn't have the vocabulary and I didn't have a way to express myself to to question them or to be inquisitive or to even raise my own ideas in a way that felt, as I say, respectful but also honest because I don't know I don't know who's right or wrong. I'm still figuring it all out. I would just like to be part of the conversation. That's the whole point about the speaking channel. I want to be part of the conversations that I'd like to be a part of. And a lot of the time, I'm silent. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. And as I say, this this phrase, I'm I'm smiling. If you're watching the video, I'm smiling. Uh, oh, sorry, if you're just listening, I'm smiling. This. And sometimes I do it just in my head. Sometimes I think, well, that was not my experience. Because people may talk to me about university or work or how women are treated. And instead of feeling emotional and feeling squashed and feeling like they're not listening to me or or worse than that, doubting myself and my own experiences and wondering if I'm just feeling a little bit crazy. Excuse me, got a tickle of a cough. That's worse. That's worse when you're doubting yourself. If you're secure in yourself when you're listening to somebody and they're saying something and it's different to your experience, but you feel secure and you feel that's okay. They have their experience. I have mine and and maybe I need to express it and maybe I don't. I think for me, what was worse is that I was I was doubting my own experience and my own conclusions about that experience and and just to think in my own head well that was not my experience creates a little bit of a, an emotional barrier for me that I can then put them and and also be inquisitive about 
What was their experience that led them to that? And part of that curiosity about their own experience has led me to reach out to a few people to do some interviews on this podcast. Because when I was teaching people, I was really connecting to people who felt nervous or anxious about speaking. But I did spot that there were people who felt very differently about speaking. And the trouble is, is that they were struggling to express themselves clearly. So it was really hard for me to figure out what their experience was. And um, as I say, I've reached out to a few people. I've got three people already saying that they'll be interviewed. And I'm really fascinated to know what their experience is and more detail than that. Like, how did, you know, they have a particular experience. They explain and interpret that experience a certain way. I want to connect the dots. Are people who find speaking hard struggling with the language or struggling with that self-conscious feeling of hearing their own voice? Anyway, I've digressed again. I love the word digress. It is about, that was not my experience. And then they reach their conclusion. And we talk a lot about the problem and the conclusion, but we don't always talk about the experience in between and all those things that are happening. And yet we all know we're all having different experiences if we stop and think about it. So I'm really curious to know what other people are feeling. And I know for a fact that when I heard this expression, that was not my experience. Even if I say it just to myself, it changed the way I communicated and interacted with other people and and in particular people who were super certain about this is the way forward and this is what I believe and this is the answer to this particular problem. So I leave that with you. I hope that helps that uh, for you to organize your thoughts a little bit. But the second one was it depends. And I didn't figure this out. I was in my... I was in my early 30s and I haven't said much about the professions that I used to do, but I used to be what's called a chartered surveyor. So that was involved with managing commercial property and doing valuations of commercial property. <clears throat> and to do this, you have to do a three year degree and then you have to do two year professional training. And at the end of that professional training, you do what? what's called an oral exam, like an interview. You have to do a presentation and a report and different things. But the worst bit is a presentation in front of a panel of three people and you can then be asked questions about, about your presentation. Then you have a Q&A time where you can be asked anything about any of the work that you've done in the last two years. So you feel like you're swatting up and studying I don't know the world like everything you feel this is an impossible task and one of the assessments that they're making is do you represent the profession professionally and they're trying to know how you will interact and and speak about property with clients and and come across as a professional. So it is important that they're testing the speaking. I completely get this. But I was finding it really nervous. Anyway, I was super nervous about the presentation and about the amount of information that I was supposed to remember for this interview. And I ended up failing the exam. It's called the APC. I, fa I ended up failing the exam. So I had to go into work the next day and everybody's like, oh, how did you do? How did you do? Because everybody knows that you've done this exam. And normally, if you're in a big company, there'll be about six, eight of you that are doing the exam at any one time. So some will have passed, some will have failed, and I'd failed. And that felt awful. That was a really horrible experience. And, and, it was bad enough to fail, but to actually walk into work and tell everybody that you'd failed it felt terrible. And I knew that I had to do something different. And I was pretty sure I was pretty sure it was related to the speaking and how I expressed myself. But also, 
it was before that because I was embarrassed to ask questions of the people that were more experienced than me. I'm going off track here, but I, I'm going to keep going. I will come back to the It Depends because it, it happened in the interview. I wasn't asking people in the office. If, they, if I asked them once and they explained it and I didn't understand it, I was too embarrassed to ask them a second time. And what I noticed from failing the exam was that feeling was so horrible that that kind of pushed me and motivated me that the next time I didn't understand something, I remember asking one of the partners of the company, so one of the bosses, I was asking him this question and I didn't understand his answer. And I thought, I have to get over this embarrassment of asking him to explain again because there is no going away and figuring it out. I, I, I need help with this. And the alternative is to fail this exam again and feel that horribleness. So I remember asking the partner again and all my courage, all my courage to say, I know I don't get it. Can you explain it again? And at the end of that second explanation, I still didn't understand. And there was definitely a moment then. There was a moment that I was thinking, I cannot ask him a third time. Cannot. You know when you've asked somebody somebody's name and you've forgotten it twice and you think, I cannot ask a third time. But I thought, you have to ask. You have to ask. Or the alternative is you fail again. And you walk back into the office and you feel you the humiliation of having to tell everybody in the company that you failed this exam. So I asked him a third time and I still didn't. <laughs> I still didn't understand what he was saying. I mean, I think sometimes you can just be on different wavelengths with somebody. I still didn't get it. And I just said, I'm so sorry. I'm not understanding this at all. And so I ended up asking him a fourth time. But obviously there was quite long pauses because I was just, I was so humiliated to say, I can't get this. I don't know what you're talking about. And so I ended up asking him a fourth time. And it was the fourth time that I finally understood what was being said. And then the next time I was speaking to and asking questions of people, it became easier. It became easy to say, you know, this bit I didn't understand, this bit I do. And, and actually just standing up for myself and feeling completely comfortable that, well, not completely comfortable, but a lot more comfortable about admitting things that I didn't understand. So when I was going for the second time to sit this APC, to sit this exam, that was the experience that I'd had. I'd had six months work experience where I kept saying, <clears throat> I don't understand, I don't understand, and uh, until I did understand. And another thing that I did was I was reading the uh, criteria for passing the exam. And one of the things was you need to represent the profession well. And another of the things was you need to express and be able to communicate a level of knowledge which is equivalent to your experience, your two, three years experience. And that really struck me because I thought, they're not asking me to be perfect. They're not asking me to sound like I've been working in the profession for 20 years. They're asking me to represent myself well as at three years. And part of that will be to say, I don't know, or I'll go check on that. And really, that's part of being professional, isn't it? To say, this is part of my experience. This is part of my knowledge. And this is not. And that really got me thinking about how I was going to be answering the questions in this exam. Because prior to that, I thought you have to answer all of the questions to pass. You have to know all the answers to everything. But in this second time of going into the exam, I thought you don't have to know everything about everything. You need to trust that you've had this two, three years experience and and what you know you know and what you don't know you don't know and that is how you go into 
the interview. And one of the realisations I had was that a lot of people had a lot of experience in one particular area. So, for example, they'd always worked with offices or they'd always worked in a, in a particular area of London. And when they were asked questions by the examiners, for example, should you invest in industrial units at the moment? Is this a good time to invest in industrial units? If they'd had loads of experience working in industrial units, they would jump in and say, yes, a da, 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 whatever, and jump on with their answer. But the examiners wanted you to treat them as if they were a client and you to represent yourself as a professional. And what they needed you to do is to ask for more information from them. So the correct answer wasn't, yes, da, 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 da. here's all the knowledge I know about this subject. The correct answer was, it depends. What's your attitude to risk? What is it that you need from your investment? How are you planning on managing it? Da, da, da. And just slowing things down a bit. And the interesting thing about the phrase, it depends, from a brain science behaviorist, whatever type of um, viewpoint, is that when you say it depends, you're telling your brain there's a yes answer and there's a no answer based on more information from this person. There's a yes scenario and no scenario. There's a, you know, should I invest in this? Yes, if you have these kind of, kind of desires and this kind of money. Or no, if you have these kind of things going on in your life. And that is what makes you sound like a professional, in my opinion, where the yes answer and jumping into the information makes you sound knowledgeable, but it kind of makes you sound like you're selling something. And I found, I found in the exam that the it depends helped me slow down and think of the different scenarios and different possibilities rather than jumping into what the majority of my experience was about, just slow down. It depends. It could be this, it could be that. And also in the exam, I found myself completely comfortable saying, no, that's outside of my experience. I would have to check with a colleague. And if you're wondering, yay, I did pass the second time. And that felt a lot better than failing the first time. But I knew that there were key points. There was key points about how I spent my six months in between those two exams about I have to admit that I don't know stuff. I have to say to the people, can you explain it again? And not just once or twice and then feeling embarrassed again, three, four times, even more than that, if need be. I needed to ask that and then and then trust that. I'm not trying to pretend that I know more. And in that situation, when I was in the exam, slow down. It depends. There's a yes and there's a no answer. And I found later on as well, when I'm working in coaching or teaching or whatever else I'm doing, that it depends. You don't have to say it out loud, but what you're doing is you're telling your brain, don't jump to the first thing. Don't jump in and say the first thing that you're thinking. Take a breath. There's a yes scenario. There's a no scenario. And you may find that as you've taken that breath and consider those two possibilities, you still want to go forward and say the yes. Da, da, da. You don't want to give the opposite opinion. But at least then you're not going home to bed later on the night and saying, oh, gosh, I didn't say that or I, I forgot to mention this or you've missed a huge section out because I think that's what people feel bad about afterwards is that there's so much information that they have in their brain but they're not always communicating it well so these these two phrases are completely different the I think that was not my experience was much more of a, a personal how can I calm the nervous system a bit and how can I feel better in those situations where I'm feeling a bit more intimidated, but that it depends is just a useful thing to remember in terms of 
you know, you're put on the spot and thinking on your feet. It depends. Da, da, da. Could be this, could be yes, could be no. What are those different situations? So I'm really hoping that today, although I've told you stories and how I got to those stories as best as I, as I remember, I'm really hoping that it's actually practically useful, that if you're listening to this and you're, and you're in a situation where you're intimidated by someone, you could think, that was their experience. Was my experience the same? Are we arguing about different things? Have we just had completely different experiences? And then the it depends. The it depends is slowing down, thinking about all the experience and all the different possibilities that could be. I hope that's useful. Anyway, so put some comments. If you're listening to this, put, I'd love some comments and some questions and some things that you'd like to know, particularly if it's about different experiences of speaking or different problems that you've got. I'd really like to know more from you. So take care. Bye.